three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching some Ash on Comics. My name is Ash. Today I have a comic, Hawkman number 15. Join. I can't even speak. Stan, what's going on, man? What? I'm getting old? Oh, I am getting old. All right. Um, this is Stan, the legend, the myth. It's not a myth. Stan, are you a myth? I just called you a myth. I'm sorry, man. Stan is a godfather of comics, uh, expert of everything great. Here is our channel mascot, Forky, intern. Uh, he cleans up all the trash. He's a resident expert on trash. He's learned he's not trash. What about this comic? Is this comic trash? It sure does look like trash. Look at this hideous cover. God, this cover is terrible. Um, so Brian Hitch left Hawkman and I haven't realized how much I like Brian Hitch until he's gone. Wasn't my favorite style of artist. I feel like he's just a little too bland, but so solid. Then they got Will Conrad and I was like, okay, Will Conrad's kind of a, you know, he's a developing artist, getting better. And then they got this issue. It's not even, a, what was, was it Pat Olaf, Pete Olaf, someone? And this cover looks like, like a deadlines tomorrow. We need a cover. Uh, okay, I'm gonna scribble something out. This is awful. Look at the, it's this floating head over here, and just, it's just. This is supposed to be the special battle damage covers. Uh, just wow, wow, DC, wow. Um, anyways, this is number fifteen. Issues one through twelve of Hawkman are some of the greatest ongoing series comics I have ever read. I adore issues 1 through 12 of Hawkman. You can get the first six issues in trade right now, and the second six will be available soon. If you have not read this series, I recommend picking it up. I, I recommend even further just trying to pick up issues 1 through 12. This is not a hot-selling book, although it should be because it is such high quality. Um, the first 12 issues of Hawkman retell... Well... They tell a new story of Hawkman's origin, but in a really interesting way that I've never seen done before, where it didn't erase previous origin stories, but instead it elaborated on them. Or rather, it, it told parts that you never saw. The, the origin story of Hawkman in issues 1 through 12 is more like the dark side of the moon. It's, you know, you see the moon every day. That backside exists. You just don't ever see it. It's the same thing. It's like it's this origin was like, oh, it was there all along. We just didn't know what it was. We only saw the the, the half of it. We didn't see the other half. And it, it all coincides. It works well. And it's a great jumping on point. If you're a person who's like, I don't know anything about Hawkman. And he looks really stupid and hokey to me. Look at that picture. I understand completely why you would not want to pick this up off the shelf. But let me tell you. It's worth it. It's part Batman, part Indiana Jones, with a little inkling of Superman mixed in. Uh, he's he's not just some guy. He's got super strength. He's got this mace, which isn't really magical, but I don't know. It's got some sort of cosmic properties of its own. It returns to his hand the way like Thor's hammer does. Um, he is he is history's detective. He's not. You know, Batman's the world's greatest detective. Hawkman is like the history's detective. His alter ego, Carter Hall, is a uh, archaeologist, Indiana Jones kind of style. And he goes throughout history. And because in the world of comic books, history includes superpowered beings, cosmic things, all these things that aren't part of reality, him being this archaeologist and these leads to adventures and so forth. Um, that you wouldn't normally see, and it makes for some exciting stories. It's different than your normal run-of-the-mill comics, but yet it's still got all the tropes and the things that make superhero comics great, which, you know, the hero's journey, um, being, you know, a paragon of virtue, these sort of things, you know, self-sacrifice. I've gone way too long. I cannot speak highly enough for this comic, which does not sell enough needs fans should take notice if you are a person who's like i'm pissed off that there's no good comics to read well you're not reading hawkman so you're part of the problem um 
If you're out there buying Tom King's Batman and you're not buying Hawkman, that's the problem. We're telling these companies that we're going to keep buying the shit product you make and the good stuff you make, like Hawkman, we're not interested. How can you blame them? How can you blame DC for making bad comics when we don't support the good comics? That's, that's, that's my thing. I love this book so much. I want everyone to discover it like I did because I was prejudiced. I was one of those people that just snubbed my nose. I was like, oh, man, stupid. I don't have any interest in this book. Um, so moving along. Uh, issue 13 was a one-shot storyline. That was one of the better single-issue books I've read in a long time. Then issue 14 started this year of the villain. It was The Offer. And apparently Shadow Thief is one of Hawkman's arch nemesis. I don't know anything about this character. Uh, it bummed me out that I learned about him because I created a character many, many years ago when I was like 13 years old and part of my own private multiverse that I have of my own superheroes and so forth. Uh, I created a character called Shadow Thief um, and now I can't ever utilize him because Shadow Thief already exists. I'd have to come up with a new name. He's conceptually a little bit different. Uh, my Shadow Thief was a speedster. He was my take on a speedster. One of the things I have always done with characters, like, I don't even, even gays even care when I create characters. Um, I don't like like the single dimensional characters. Like I don't like, like what's your power? I'm fast. Do you do anything else? No, I'm just fast. Shadow Thief was my one of my original takes on this, and this is how I came to create it. It's like, well, do you do any... Shadow Thief was a mix between a phase, per person who could phase, like uh, Kitty Pride, Shadow Cat, um, and a speedster. Imagine if Kitty Pride was like also the Flash, um, and also um, had dark powers and could hide in the shadows, a la, I guess, Nightcrawler. You put those all together, you get sort of the power set. Um, anyways. No one cares about my characters. Smothered by living shadow. Here we go. Ooh. Um, we start off in an alley. And uh, you know what? The layouts of this book, strong. Um, Olaf is not an artist I like necessarily looking at his illustrations. But this, this scene here coming down the alley. There's a paradox that I learned across many lifetimes. An unseen enemy is an enemy seen everywhere. So we got this mysterious guy walking down, looking back kind of over his shoulder. It lurks in every alley, makes a home of every shadow. If it's a brigand back there following me, you must be barking mad to try it in the evening. Either that or you're new in town. The lamps are lit, chum. The shadows long. The tower tolls the hour of the shade. And so I was like, oh, who, who's this guy? <laughs> we last left the last episode, or last episode, last issue of Hawkman, who had just had his shadow stolen by a shadow thief, uh, who had extra powers for, thanks to Lex Luthor. So this guy, the shade, I'm like, hmm, he's got his own special font and logo and stuff, so he must be a DC character I'm just not familiar with. I'm chasing an enemy who has wormed his way into my head. He's everywhere but always out of my grasp. I need help. And then it's Hawkman. Richard, help me. Darkness Within, Shades of Former Selves by Robert Venditti, one of the best ongoing writers in comics. Pat Olaf, that was, I knew it was Pat or Pete. Pat Olaf is the penciler. You can see here, it's just, it's not that it's atrocious, it's just, it's, okay, it's the B team. <laughs> um, so we move on, his, his buddy's helping him. Carter, can't have you like this. Retracts his wing, that's better. And he whisks, it does the shadow powers. Well, I'm gonna look after you. And um, we see Hawkman, he goes you know, to darkness. Then he's like, mind if I take your lives? And he's fighting and smashing all these guys. And you're like, what's going on? And they're shooting at him and he's throwing his mace and knocking him out. and. Send reinforcements, send everyone, blah, blah, blah. And then, don't, please, and you're seeing it from the point of view of the soldiers, Hawkman's about to smash him. Don't, don't, and Hawkman wakes up. And the dogs, of course, need to, to drink and get on camera, that's their thing. Carter, Carter, where? 
Richard, thank God I found you. So here Carter had a dream. Well, what stood out to me about this was that the dream, Hawkman wasn't Hawkman. Hawkman was, or Carter Hall was the soldier. Fight, he was fighting against Hawkman. And I think that's going to be relevant. Um, and it's a very subtle clue. We see him talking to his buddy again, tells him about his story. He's, he's read the journal. He asks more questions. Uh, I'll let you read all this yourself. But basically, we get to this up, this next scene where he's like, you know, he's like, you got to tell me about Krypton, Thanagar, all this stuff. And he's like, it's obvious I'm avoiding it. And he holds the book out, Richard. And Richard's just still holding the book. And you're like, what? What's going on? And then he pulls the book back. Car's like, okay. And then you see, bloody hell. And I didn't catch this at first. And I think this is significant. I don't know if you're going to catch it either. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. It's impossible, and he pulls away the curtains. Richard, what's wrong? How about a warning you're going to blind me? Carter, you have no shadow. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, we kind of knew this. I knew this. I wasn't paying attention to this. My eyes were more about the book. And I you know, I went back and was like, oh, oh, of course. That's... Look, at, even when he holds the book out, like his arm doesn't connect to... See? doesn't connect. And I just thought that was... Uh, that was kind of cool. And you guys might have caught it, so it may not be as cool to you. Um, Carter's like, what's it mean? Evil. And then the light goes out. So he's like, quick, we got to go. So he, he takes him to the special place, and he's like, what kind of room is this? A safe room. Safe from what? Well, shadows, apparently. Um, he's like, I, I require a place where shadows hold no sway, not even mine. And as we go in this room, and I was like, that's really cool. And they're having a talk, and uh, these, you know, these, they're talking about the powers of shadows and different things. And all of a sudden, he's like, "Oh, I see, clever bastard!" <laughs> and then, ah, and the shadow erupts out of his mouth. And shadow, the shadow thief arrives. The great and terrible shade, you're, you are who's supposed to be so tough to beat. I figured the title bout for Undisputed Shadow Champ would have at least made it to second round. Cough, cough, oh. Shadow Thief indeed. Choke on me, you git. And then Hawkman hitting his button. I like this. It looks like he's using his middle finger <laughs> to hit his button. I was like, that is awesome. Look at that. I'll blow this up here. He's definitely using his middle finger. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to make this a meme. <laughs> Ah, he's charging. Um, it's like, I'll give you a second round. And he swings at him and it goes right through because naturally he's shadow. Uh, and he's like, what? He was right in front of me. And then Shadow Thief gives him the whole villainous monologue. Ah, oh, the problem with you heroes, yada, yada, yada. Um, and Hawkman can't hit him, so he's just throwing his maze and smashing stuff. And Shadow Thief continues to just talk, you know, all arrogantly. And it's like, okay, well... Got what I needed. Thanks for leading me to uh, your friend uh, Shade. So it looks like Shade was the real thing all along, and Hawkman was just the tool to get to Shade. Um, and he's like, ha, 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 and takes off. And Hawkman's all pissed off. Um, he's like, man, if I had ever expected to use room, this room, I expected to be alone and no one to talk to. My mouth, when I opened my blasted mouth, it created a shadow inside. The bastard used it as a doorway. And Hawkman's just like, oh, I'm sorry, I should never have. And then he smashes his room. <laughs> Throws a crash, crash, boom, boom. Yes, well, not sure I prefer you, what you've done with the place. Which was kind of funny, but also kind of like, really? Like, dude, you just, this room probably cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to make. You just destroyed it. Um, and there's this like, they just kind of joke about it. This outburst isn't like you, Carter, to let a thief get under your skin. Nightmares keep me from sleeping. Sand hounds me when I'm awake. I can't grasp either. I'm fighting shadows. Literally, Sands is a shadow thief, by the way. That was confusing. Um, at least you won't be on your own anymore, eh? Richard, I can't let you get involved. And then they just have this discussion. It's like, of course I'm going to help you. My, my uh, shadow's been stolen, blah, blah. And so this sets up a really cool beginning of an adventure together with Hawkman 
who traditionally, is my understanding, is not uncommon for Hawkman to be with someone. They did the whole um, Hawkman and Adam series um, in the past. Uh, of course, Hawkman and Hawk Girl. So I'm kind of interested to see this Hawkman with a, with a partner. Um, and then they go to the Shadowlands. And it's next, Battle for the Realm of Darkness. And um, this is a pretty solid issue. Um, it's not up to the normal Hawkman awesomeness that was 1 through 12. And that's part of the problem with a book like Hawkman. When you have, you set the bar so high from the outset... Your first two story arcs are just bomb. Then you have to keep that level. And that's that's really, really hard to do. And, and sadly today, modern fans seem to be of the variety of everything has got to always be as good as it always ever is, always. It can never take a dip. And if it does take a dip, it's not just only less good, it's trash, right? That's... That's the thing I see all the time. Oh, you know, season eight of Game of Thrones wasn't as great as the previous season, so it's just utter dog shit. There's no redeeming value to it whatsoever. Um, okay, well, you're, everyone's welcome to their own opinions. What you like is what you like. Um, I, I can't tell you that. I discourage that because I think it prevents you from enjoying things. This is not as good as Hawkman 1 through 12, what I told you in the beginning. And I'm okay with that. I'd never expect that Venditti could keep that level of, t of storytelling book after book after book after book. Eventually it had to slow down and, you know, Hawkman fights just a traditional comic book villain. And this was fine. This was actually better than the last issue. Issue 14 is the worst issue, in my opinion, so far. And even that book, if you go see my review, I give it a positive review. I'm going to give this one a positive review as well. Even though the art, which you can see for yourself, is in the... Um, I'm going to ride this out a little bit longer um, because this it's earned it. It's earned my patience, right? Um, and this is what I want from DC Comics. Well, not exactly. I would like a better artist, but I understand this book doesn't sell that much, so they can't afford to put a top artist on the book. So I'm going to support Robert Venditti. He's doing something really magical. And uh, I enjoy this. This is a huge transition from the storyline that's been with basically Hawkman's origin. Now he's the Shadow Thief. It's totally different. It's it's a new element for me. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to stick with it. I enjoy it. Uh, I encourage you to read Hawkman 1 through 12 and then decide for yourself whether or not it's good enough like I am for, for the re remaining books. Don't jump in here. If you're going to jump in on Hawkman, get issues 1 through 12. You'll probably not have to pay more than cover price for the previous issues. And you're, if you're if you're lucky, you might be able to go on eBay and get someone selling a bundle of them for cheap. That's how I've got a lot of runs. I got my Super Sons run that way. Um, less than cover price. I bought, you know, just buy them in bulk. Uh, so this is me and Ash. Stan approves. Forky says this is definitely not trash. And... Uh, I hope you're enjoying Hawkman like I am, and I hope you're just enjoying comics in general. Remember, if you're enthused about comics, if you like them, uh, which I'm, I can't imagine you don't if you're watching my my this channel at all, uh, share that enthusiasm. It, it's 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 perfectly fine to rant and rave when when things go wrong and you hate what's happening, but don't get lost in that. That's why I try to try to balance it. Balance your outrage and your being upset with with things that you like. And then you can embrace and remember that joy, the reason why you're in comics to begin with. Uh, hopefully you can find that. Hopefully you can find the things that still make you uh, remember why you love this hobby. And uh, if you like Hawkman, if you want to say anything, down below somewhere in a place you can type text. Uh, love to respond. You can join us on the Discord channel. And uh, thanks for watching this channel. I really appreciate every view, every comment. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.